What's up guys, Ruppy here, welcoming you to week 4 of the Breejax Battle Royale. And I'm just gonna say real quick, feels good to have all my internet issues sorted out. Trying to work on some of the stuff on my laptop was actually a little painful, not gonna lie. In any event, my Columbus Swoo are currently sitting at 2-1 with a plus 3 differential. Not bad! I believe we are currently the highest ranked of all the 2-1 teams, which I believe puts us in 4th place right now because there are 3 undefeated teams, and obviously something has to give. If you've been following along with a pattern lately, then I think you know what is on the docket for today. Considering we've been taking a trip down memory lane for the end of the IBL season that just ended, it seems fitting that my Week 11 game from that season happens to be my Week 4 game for this season of BBR. That said, we are playing the Delta Gligers coached by my good friend, Platinum Howler. Howler is one of the three aforementioned undefeated teams sitting at 3-0, and with a plus 9 differential, he is actually in first place right now. I would kind of hate to set him back in that regard, but at the same time... If I don't make a dent in that, it could spell trouble for me down the line, pending how things shape up as the season progresses. My team is certainly looking ready to go. You might be amused at the uh, at seeing one particular addition here, but we'll get we'll get to them in just a moment. Speaking of which, let's go ahead and flip over to the chalkboard, so to speak, so we can get into this matchup. I will be upfront with you guys. This was actually a bit of a pain to deal with to uh, build for. But I think I got something I'm comfortable with, and we'll see how well it plays out. So, Howler's roster is going to be appearing off to the right. His team consists of the following. Volgarona, Alakazam, Rotom Wash, Lycanroc Dusk, Aromati, Stragalgi, Pangoro, Sandslash, Stoutland, and Trevenant. So right off the bat, Volgarona and Alakazam. I hate this combination. This combination has given me a headache trying to figure out how to crack because they're both stupidly powerful special attackers and the problem is most of my more specially oriented answers are kind of actually weak to one of these two in some respect if not both of them um like rock dusk also poses some problems like rock dusk and alex well alex and pretty much outspeeds my entire team like in Rock Dusk is base 110, which is immensely fast as well, and it has Excel Rock to be able to uh, make up the gap if need be. Outside of those three, and to some degree the likes of Stoutland and Rotom Wash, everything else on his team is on the slower end of things. They're a little bulkier, they're more so meant to be, I think, more tanks and just general pains in the ass than anything else. But this did give me an idea to be able to approach this game. Because the more I started piecing things together, the more I think I found an answer to this roster. So let's get into that, shall we? Starting off with Cadbaladder, my Drodagon. I am running an Assault Vest Drodagon this week, even though I don't have a whole lot of special defense investment. This is the good thing about Drodagon having, uh... Both of its defenses basically be the same stat. I can kind of pull stuff like this. Max defense allows me to be able to handle his physical attackers. 244 HP certainly helps. The 12 special defense plus the assault vest I think is all I'm really going to need for this game. Dragon Claw, Rock Slide, Super Power, and Sucker Punch is the plan. Super Power is there more so for things like Stoutland and Pangoro since Drodagon is better equipped to be able to handle those two than... Uh, Another option we'll be getting to shortly. But with the Assault Vest and these and this investment, Drodagon is basically able to just not care at all about whatever Volcarona wants to throw at me. I don't think Volcarona really has an option to be able to deal with Drodagon. Well, actually, I don't remember if Volcarona gets Dazzling Gleam or not. Something will probably appear on the screen if that is in fact the case. But even still, I don't know if he'd really go with it because if Quiver Dance is taking up one of his move slots, and it almost always is when we're talking about Volcarona, Howler's got a bit of a four move slot syndrome uh, issue he needs to sort out with that bug in this game. 
So, Drodigon is certainly in a good position to be able to 1v1 that thing easily and just dismantle it with a rock slide. Sucker Punch allows me to be able to deal with Alakazam a lot easier. If he brings Sash, which I would not be surprised if he did, then Sucker Punch... Uh, I, can I can take a hit, break the Sash, and then Sucker Punch is the end of Alakazam. I think Cavalier is going to be a very good defensive crush for this game as just an all-purpose tank. Which is exactly how I'm hoping to try to play it. Moving on, we have Prodigy. Our Raboot is resurfacing. It's been to one game so far. It didn't really do much in that game, but maybe this will be the difference. This Maybe this time will be different. Same kind of idea as last time. I got Libero because Raboot can abuse it, where Cinderace can't. Heavy Duty Boots, so I'm not being affected by hazards. I max attack, the 196 speed guarantees that Raboot is always outrunning a non-Scarf Rotom Wash, which allows me at least the freedom to be able to U-turn out on that thing if necessary. Um, Flare Blitz is obviously a powerful stab. I went low kick over high jump kick, mostly because of the potential of Trevenant. Low kick's doing enough damage where it's definitely going to threaten the likes of Pangoro and Stoutland and Lycanroc Dusk anyway. So I think I'm fine on that front. It's a 2 hit KO, but it at least, I think, threatens those things that with some prior damage, I can definitely pick them off. Especially since I also brought Sucker Punch on this Raboot, pretty much for the same reason I'm running it on Drodagon, to be able to catch Alakazam. Not to mention, if I do hit one of those things, less so Pangoro, but definitely the likes of Stoutland and... Well, Stoutland, I can kind of outspeed. Um, actually, I can kind of outspeed. Yeah, Stoutland, I can outspeed. Lycanroc Dust, not so much. But a low kick sucker punch combination will certainly do uh, that rock dog in. Also, have a little bit of bulk investment just so Rabu can take some hits better. Because Rabu is actually a surprisingly solid check to Volcarona as well. Mostly because, unless Howler's running, say, Psychic on Volcarona, which I could see for the likes of Tentacruel, then he really doesn't have a whole lot he can actually touch Raboot with. Moving down the line, we have our Dragon Zord coming back another week. I am also running a Soul Vest on Titar with Max HP, Max Sp Spadef, Careful Nature. Basically, Drudge is my all-purpose wall, Titar is kind of my more... Truly special oriented wall in this game, which is weird to say when you realize that it still has a severe Volcarona weakness. Not to mention it really doesn't want to be taking a focus blast from Alakazam. But generally the idea is to get Titar in and pending how things play out, just try to cause as much damage as possible to soften some things up for other members of my team. Rock Slide, Crunch, High Horsepower, and Heavy Slam is the name of the game. Heavy Slam is there pretty much almost entirely for Aromatisse. I really don't want Drud trying to take that thing on, but Titar I think I could deal with uh, Aromatisse to some degree. Crunch is there for the likes of Trevenant and Alakazam. Rock Slide is Stab as well as, well so is Crunch. But Rock Slide is also Stab and dismantles Volcarona all day. High horsepowers for the likes of Dragology. You've probably noticed I have Unnerve as the ability, and no, that is not a mistake. I'm running Unnerve for two reasons. Number one, on the off chance he tries to pull Charty Berry Volcarona on me instead of running Boots, because I'll be up front with you guys right now, I'm not bringing any hazards to this game. Between Boots Volcarona and Alakazam having Magic Guard, as much as I know it would chip away at everything else, I kind of didn't see the point in trying to really bother with it. Also, I guess I should finish a thought I never did finish earlier. Uh, I went low kick over high jump kick for Rabu just because of Trevenant. I don't want... Trevenant seems like a really obvious switch in, in that regard. If Depending on certain matchups. So I didn't want to be taking high jump kick recoil unnecessarily. Low kick at least allows me to basically waste a turn and then flare blitz Trevenant into oblivion. But with T-Tar, I'm running on Nerve, one, because of the Volcarona Charty Berry possibility, because I have actually pulled that in PBAL, where I actually have Volcarona myself. And two, 
If you look at his roster, you'll realize that he has two Sand Rush abusers in Sand Slash and Stoutland. Fun fact, Stoutland was actually going to be my original final draft pick, but Howler inadvertently sniped it from me, so I end up with something else. But that's fine, because Tyranitar has served this team well, even without anything to abuse the sand it sets, but I'm not giving Howler free sand to turn back on to turn back on me with Sand Rush, so Unnerve is the ability we are going with. Moving down the line, we have Ray Phoenix the Holucha coming back, and you th you know the song and dance by now. Grassy Seed, Unburden. I'm running Swords Dance this week just because the plus two I think will serve me a lot better than a plus one would if I ran Home Claws. Acrobats in close combat is pretty standard fare. I'm running Rock Tomb this week as my rock move. Honestly, I would only really need the rock move for one reason in particular, and that is Volcarona. I know I can kill it with an acrobatics once my seed is popped, but Rock Tomb does not make contact, so I can use Rock Tomb to take care of Volcarona, so I can avoid potentially running into Flame Body and having Holucha, a potential Holucha sweep cut short because I burn myself. Plus, Rock Tomb's good for lowering speed on the off chance I actually need to pull that stunt, so that's good to fall back on. But Acrobatics and Close Combat are standard fare. Otherwise, Max Attack, Adamant, little bit of, of bulk. The 236 speed from an Adamant Nature basically is designed to guarantee that I always outrun plus 2 Volcarona. So, I'm trying to force Howler's hand that if he does bring a Quiver Dance Volcarona and thinks he can boost up enough to outspeed beat Holucha, then he's going to need to waste three turns of Quiver Dance to try to pull that off. And I do not plan on giving him that. Now, Volcarona is going to be beaten down in the process. I am not giving it... I'm actually bringing a very offensive team this week, mostly because I do not want to give the things like Volcarona and Alakazam a free turn to set up and proceed to decimate me. But the 236 speed also helps on the off chance he somehow has some kind of sand option for sand... Sand Slash and Stoutland to abuse that is not my T-Tar, since I'm not bringing Sand. So, this allows Ray Phoenix to still be able to outrun uh, even Stoutland, his fastest Sand Rush user, under Sand as well if need be. And then, of course, what would a Grassy Seed Holucha be without his tag team partner, the drummer god himself, Neil Perth, the Rillaboom? I'm actually... The moveset may be the same as I've run in past weeks, U-Turn, Knockoff, Grassy Glide, and High Horsepower. I've made some tweaks to how I'm approaching this with Rillaboom, however. I am running Max Attack, but I'm running 220 speed, which is just enough to... I believe always outrun Stoutland, at least, um, unless he's Scarfed or somehow has Sand Rush active. Um, it's... Unfortunately, Rillaboom is not fast enough to be able to naturally outrun Rotom Wash, unless Howler wants to bring a purely bulky one. But Rotom Wash is going to be terrified of Rillaboom anyway just because of Grassy Glide, so I'm not too worried about that. I'm also running Leftovers to kind of get the double recovery going because Rillaboom can actually handle Alakazam surprisingly well with this spread. Because Grassy Glide gives me priority so long as I have my terrain, which means I can easily hit Alakazam before it can hit me. And without a boost, Howler certainly can has nothing that can Oko Rillaboom. So, I have that working for me. Honestly, I think with Howler's team, the more I can put him on the back foot, the better things are going to go for me, which is the main idea behind this. Drodagon is my Volcarona answer, Rillaboom is my Alakazam answer, and everything else kind of falls into place as needed. So, but that's only five mons. Surely I've got to have a six mon in mind, and you would be right. So, ask... And I shall deliver. Ladies and gentlemen, week four marks the BBR debut of Big Daddy Claw, my claw sir. Making me hungry for some New Orleans uh, seafood now. There she got a Popeyes. Poor jokes aside, you might be a little surprised that I'm bringing claw sir this week, but I'm doing so. Not simply because of the fact that this is the mod I ended up grabbing because Howler was really adamant that I drafted her for my team because of uh, Grassy Surge. And he kind of forced my hand after he sniped Stoutland for me, so here's Claude, sir. 
But believe it or not, when I really looked over Howler's team, I realized he actually has zero switch-ins to Claude, sir. I'm running Timid Nature because, honestly, I don't... I don't need the extra power from Modest. It might be the difference between an Oko and a two-hit KO in maybe like one or two scenarios. But honestly, I think I'll be fine because Timid with Max Max kind of puts Klonzer in this position where it is almost assured to outrun everything that is in the slower half of his roster unless he puts a scarf on something. Which basically means Clawster has free reign to completely obliterate something. It can actually, if, if, my, if I don't have my grassy terrain up and he has, a, has Energy Ball and Alakazam or Giga Drain on Volcarona, believe it or not, Clawster can actually tank one of those hits unboosted and be able to fire back against those two as well. Water Pulse, Ice Beam, Dark Pulse, and Terrain Pulse is the name of the game here. Ice Beam is there purely for the Dragology. I guess to a lesser degree, the, the Trevenant. But everything else is getting boosted by Mega Launcher. Dark Pulse was certainly threatened Alakazam and Trevenant. Water Pulse is just good all-around stab in general. Terrain Pulse is good, uh, a good normal hit. But of course, there is the fact that if I do have my Grassy Terrain up, then Terrain Pulse becomes a Grass-type move. Which means Rotom Wash is not a switch into Claude, sir. So, that is going to be the team as we switch back over to my uh, locker room now. I am actually kind of excited to give this team a try and see how well it works out against Hollow this week. I am honestly really excited to finally get to use Clawitzer. I, when I saw what Clawitzer can do to his team, I, I couldn't resist. I have to give it a try. I need to bring this thing. I need to see how well it's actually going to work. Alright, let's calm down a little bit. Don't want to get ahead of ourselves. So, while I proceed to do that, you guys uh, get make yourselves comfortable, and I will be right back in just a moment when it's battle time. Hey guys, welcome to the battle portion of this video. I'm going to go ahead and apologize in advance if things are looking a little weird. There is a reason for that. So... I am doing this as a post-com. I did not intend for it to go this way, but there are two reasons as to why I am kind of doing this. One is partial, one is my decision, and the other is because of things beyond my control. The things beyond my control portion is primarily due to the fact that I have actually been having a ton of computer issues since uh, this battle was uh, take since this battle took place. Just when I had my internet issues resolved, all of a sudden my entire desktop setup pretty much goes to hell on me. So, I have had a very rough week in terms of trying to get things taken care of. The other reason, I will get to that soon enough. So, you see the teams on the screen right now. I'm also apologize, but because of my uh, computer issues, I am having to forego my... Uh, usual fancy layout for the battle portion of this. I really didn't want to, but I'm kind of in a position where I can't really edit it right now, and my my options are kind of limited basically right now as far as what I've got available to me. I am, will hopefully have my computer, pick, my computer fixed soon, so this will not be an issue any further. Um, so hopefully this will not be, this will only be a one week thing. Um, as far as the teams you see on the screen right now heading into this battle, um, you see my team, of course. Howler end up bringing Alakazam, Dragology, Volcarona, Aromatisse, Rotom Wash, and Stoutland. To some degree, a lot of what I expected. I was a little surprised he brought Stoutland, though in retrospect, not that much actually, because he was probably trying to take advantage of my sand. Um, Rotom Wash, I was a little surprised at too, just because Rillaboom seemed like a fairly obvious bring because it was one of my top two draft picks for a reason. But still, that is the team he brought. So we're going to go ahead and switch over to from the, the team screen to the battle screen so we can see how uh, this played out. 
So as the battle gets started here, I decide to lead with Rillaboom. On the off chance, he does decide to lead with Rotom Wash, which is exactly what happens. I figured if he led with anything else, I could either U-turn out or just flat switch accordingly, so I thought Rillaboom was my safest lead. I decide to go ahead and U-turn knowing he's not going to keep Rotom in on this thing. So as he goes into Dragology, I'm just going to U-turn out, get some nice chip off on Dragology, though it's not really going to last for too long because, of course, uh, the grassy terrain is a thing. I contemplate going into Klotzer at this very moment, but ultimately I decide it's a little too early to start trying to pull that stone, especially since after the grassy uh, terrain heals it up, it, I, it might actually be pending his investment out of the range of an Ice Beam. So I figure the safer play is to go into my Dragon Zord, and then proceed to just hit this thing with a high horsepower, since I am AV, I can take any hit from it, and just go from there. He ends up revealing Focus Blast, which Titar is going to be able to take because of the AV, and I'm going to be able to hit it with a high horsepower, which does a tremendous amount of damage. And at this point, I he's probably realizing that I am unnerved Tyranitar, so I'm kind of smiling a little bit. I'm feeling I'm in a pretty fairly good position. I decided to stay in and go for high horsepower because, worst case scenario, he hits a Focus Blast and kills Titar, but I can just bring something else in and revenge Dragology anyway. Best case scenario, he misses a Focus Blast, and I proceed to, or goes for anything else and doesn't kill Titar, and I proceed to take out with the high horsepower. He ends up revealing Flip Turn, however, which kind of caught me off guard because, again, I really need to get a little... I am not as well versed as I probably should be in the new DLC move, so I completely di did not realize Regaldi got flip turn, though I, it does kind of make sense in retrospect. So he ends up flip turning out on me, so he, now he's going to take a moment to contemplate what he wants to send into this high horsepower. I would have figured Rotom Wash was a potential bring in at this point, just because it, it's immune to high horsepower and it could just potentially hydro pump me. But he ends up sending in Stoutland, which is fair enough as we're both going to get HP back from the terrain, and I'm going to proceed to get T-Tar out of here, because I feel I could still bring it in and maybe do some damage with it again later. So, this is the point where I decide I'm going to... I went back and forth on it mentally for a moment, I want to see, also double-check to see how many turns of grassy terrain I have left, but ultimately I do pull the trigger on switching into Cabal Ladder, my Drodagon, as he goes for Iron Head, and is going to end up taking some Rough Skin Chip which is somewhat undone by the grassy terrain, but that's perfectly fine because I still have my terrain and Cabal Ladder is actually not in a bad spot right now. I felt like going for a superpower here just because it would have easily destroyed this thing, but ultimately I talked myself out of it figuring I, would just, I should probably just get damage off on something in a more neutral hit. And going for a Dragon Claw instead was actually the smart move because I end up taking out Dragology, which puts me up 6-5, which is absolutely phenomenal. I am very happy with that turn of events at this point in time. I do lose my grassy terrain, but it's alright. He's gonna send out Rotom, and I am not keeping Cabal Ladder in because I do not need this thing getting getting burned with a Will-O-Wisp, which I'm pretty sure is what he's gonna do. So, figuring that's coming, I decide to send out Prodigy to take the incoming Will-O-Wisp because as a fire type, it can't get burned. Now... I decided to go ahead and U-turn out here, figuring that if he does stay in, which seemed very likely, he was probably going to attempt to pelt me with a Hydro Pump just because there's a Fire-type right in front of him. So, I get this U-turn out, and then decide to go into Rillaboom to scare Rotom out, because it seems like a fairly easy play. And he ends up going for the Will-O-Wisp here, which actually caught me a bit off guard that he made that call. I... In retrospect, knowing what I know now after we discuss after we talk after the game, I proceed to go for knockoff, which stunned me that he stayed in. He I also see safety goggles, which he was clearly preparing for sand, which didn't come. But in retrospect, I found out his Rotom actually didn't even have Hydro Pump. So Raboot actually had a bit of a more solid matchup than I thought. And obviously I played right into the bait of him fearing that he would have a water move. But, it works with his advantage, he burned my Rillaboom, which is actually going to be kind of crucial for what ends up happening next. So after thinking about it for a moment, he decides to send in Aromatisse, which he reveals it has a grassy seed, which is going to pop and boost this thing's defense. Which, a burned Rillaboom is obviously a bad thing. So, this is where I make what is honestly probably my biggest mistake of the game. I stand in Grassy Glide, figuring I could just get Chip off on this thing and just kind of go from there. 
And he sets up a Calm Mind. So that's not that bad, because now I do know for a fact he has Calm Mind, which is not the worst thing in the world. So seeing this, I'm going to end up you turning out with Rillaboom to try to deal with this thing accordingly. This is where I make probably the mistake that ultimately end up killing me. I honestly should have pulled the trigger on going into Clawitzer right here, right now, while Aromatisse was still at plus one, about to uh, go for plus two because of Moonblast. Instead, I end up sending in Titar because I'm trying because I figure he is going to just straight up Moonblast at this point, and I'm just just trying to sack Titar off, which he ends up calm mining, and now things are going to start to snowball. I proceed to go for a heavy slam with Titar, which is going to do a good chunk to this thing. The plus one defense is certainly going to help it take it, which is obviously not ideal. But he is going to proceed to go for a Moonblast and kill me, which, fair enough, there goes Titar. He's still only a plus two, though, as I lose my... Well, I do lose my grassy terrain, which kind of sucks. I probably should have gone into Neil Pert and you turned out into Big Daddy Claw from here to try to still salvage this. But instead, I end up going into Prodigy, figuring, okay, he's a Calm Mindset, I can probably just start trying to Flare Blitz to take this thing down. And this is where I find out he also has Wish, and on the next turn, he is also going to reveal Protect as well. So the Flare Blitz I'm about to launch is actually meaningless. So he is Calm Mind, Moon Blast, Wish, Protect, and he also has a Defense Boost from Grassy Seed. So naturally, I am actually in a very bad spot. I go ahead and Flare Blitz again, just because it's damage at this point, and I think at this point I kind of stopped thinking, which is never a good thing when you end up reaching that point in a draft format battle. I U-turn out and go back and end up going back into Neil Pert here, as he's going to end up Calm Mining on me again, knowing that I'm not going to be able to do enough damage with Flare Blitz to be able to threaten him enough that Wish is not going to be healing back more than I'm doing. So, with my Grassy Terrain back up, this is, I mean, this is another mistake I'm about to make here, but it, at this point, as I said, I think I pretty much stopped thinking at this point. I end up going for Grassy Glide again. I don't know why, because it gives this thing another free Calm Mind. I should have just U-turned out here, but I'm going to U-turn out on this turn now and end up pulling the switch into Clawitzer. The, honestly, I think I was very cautious about sending Clawitzer into a Moonblast because from plus, maybe not plus one, but definitely plus two, um, Clawitzer definitely dropped to a Moonblast. So I think I was playing very, I think I was playing a little too cautiously. Had I been a little more aggressive and gotten Clawitzer in a lot sooner, the Terrain Pulls boost with Specs and, uh, the ter and Mega Launcher would have been able to do a lot more than it did. I probably still could have put this Aromatisse in a range where... I probably could have actually destroyed it and not suffered what is about to happen. But, as it stands, I end up losing Claude, sir. I send out Rabbit at this point. I'm already accepting that I'm going to lose here. I'm going to be swept by an Aromatisse, and I will be up front. I'm perfectly fine with that, because that was my fault for not prepping a co as well for Aromatisse. I, wa I was more concerned with Alakazam and Volcarona. That is my own fault. And I am paying the price for it. What happens next, however, is the other reason why, as I said earlier, I ultimately decided that I was going to throw out my live com. Because this is the point where my live com actually started getting immensely salty. Had I kept my live com for this, n I will be upfront with you guys. Not only would I have probably very likely lost Howler as a friend. There is probably a very good chance that I probably would have turned off a lot of you guys as well from watching, because that would have probably been the most negative I have ever been in a very long time on or off this channel, and you guys certainly do not deserve to see that. The fact that he did get a little bit... W Granted, of course, now he's mowing through the rest of my team with Moonblast, but the fact that at the time it seemed like he was actually... And he's going to do that here as well, actually. The fact that he... Partly because of that crit. He is... I understand him pulling Wish Stalling on me to make sure that a crit does not kill this Aromatisse and he preserves what is ultimately going to be the 5-0 result of this game. 
But I did get immensely upset about this at the time. Because of the fact that, from my own calcs, regardless of whatever Howler was seeing, from my own calcs, Clodzer critting with a terrain pulse was the only hope I had of winning this game. And the moment I lost Clodzer, that was off the table. A crit from anything else did not do enough to kill this Aromatisse. So, ultimately, this is where we stand. I did get immensely upset about it, and I did talk with Howler about this after the game. I understand why he did it. It it still left a very bad taste in my mouth, and I got really negative and upset about it. And I apologize to Howler about that. I apologize to you guys that I'm mentioning that it even happened in the first place, because that is not me. That is not the kind of person I want to try to be. And... That is why I ultimately felt a post com was actually the better route here, outside of the uh, computer issues I've been having, because I actually have had some audio files damaged. Um, part of my live com was a casualty of that, but not the part that I really needed to get rid of in the first place, so yeah. But regardless, that is going to be a 5-0 loss. That is my own fault for not prepping as well for Romatisse as I should have. But, next week is another week. Hopefully, once my computer issues are out of the way, I don't know if they will be in time for the, my next week's, my uh, week 5 battle. Fingers crossed on that. But, we will see how things go. So, I, despite the train wreck this ultimately became, I still hope you guys enjoyed watching anyway. I have been Ruppy, and I'll see you guys next time. And, if I can say one thing in closing... Always try to stay positive, no matter what the scenario. I didn't, and now I'm trying to make up for it. So, always stay positive, guys, no matter what. Take care.